nice to meet you here and thank you for the time to join us. Okay, uh, today David also brings Cyto tokens that will we'll drop to the community. So how about we start from sending some Cyto right packets now to the community mm -hmm. group as an opening for this AMA. So our Kelly could help to sign the, the right packet. Okay. Let's wait for Kelly first, to... First we get Cyto, then we learn what Cyto is. Yeah. Why you really, really, really want this. <laughs> You're right. Let's see. I hope everything works well. Okay, we see the lucky coin in the group. Great. <laughs> I just see the announcements pop up up here. You can have one. Okay, cool. Okay, now let's begin our AMA. And uh, first, I will have a few questions to you. And then we can answer some questions from the community. All right. Perfect. Let's let's go ahead. Mm hmm. Okay, because this is the first time David come to speak with us. So how about we start with talking a little bit about yourself? How do you mm -hmm. enter the crypto industry? And what is the chance to make Saito happen? Uh, sure. I, I was in China, uh, lived in China for some time. I'm not in China right now. But uh, yeah, I was running a business 2011, 2012. And I knew how difficult it was collecting money overseas. Uh, and I think being in China made it really, really obvious. It was a huge problem. Uh, and I think that's why I and a lot of other people in China took Bitcoin way more seriously than people in the States. Um, and I think it's why China is or has been one of the leading spaces in crypto. So yeah, I got into crypto then. Um, there were debates about how to make Bitcoin grow in 2015, 2016. And Sato as a solution was developed in 2017. Uh, but it comes out of this long history of, <coughs> of really being part of the early Bitcoin community. And that's where our roots are. Uh, Sato is a project that's like Bitcoin. We think of it as fixing Bitcoin in many ways. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, this should be the first time that our community meets Sato officially. And uh, I believe most of our community members, they don't have much knowledge mm -hmm. about Sato. So mm -hmm. could you please give us a, like a brief introduction about Sato? What is the problem sure. Sato would like to solve and what makes this unique? Okay, um, a lot of people approach blockchain and they say, oh, it's a technical problem, a technical problem, technical problem. Scaling is a technical problem. Uh, with Sato, we're really in a very different mindset. Um, when we look at the scaling problem, we see an economic problem. And the economic problem with blockchain is this. With Bitcoin, we pay for hashing. And we do this because we can measure who does the work and we can pay the people that do the work. And so when people are like, oh, well, let's, let's get rid of hash and we use staking. Why staking? Well, we can measure who does the work and we can pay the people who do the work. And because of this, there's a problem that happens, which is when the network is small, everything's okay. But as the network grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, all of a sudden the volunteers go away. So in Bitcoin, we have the early volunteers who run the network and they run nodes and they, they collect transactions from users and they give them to miners. And as the network gets bigger and bigger and bigger, volunteers go away. They don't want to do it. It's too expensive. And so we have a deep problem in that all of the money is paying for mining and staking. And there's nobody getting paid to do the network work. And the result of this is that we need the, we need the free market to do the network stuff. But if you ask the free market to do the network work, it won't do it for free. 
And what it starts to do is it starts to find ways to control the money, control the data, and make money from it. And so what we're seeing in every single blockchain that's growing really big, whether it is Ethereum with Infura, whether it's uh, BSV with Tal, a lot of the proof of stake coins, they're getting one really, really big network provider. They're turning into monopolies. Sado solves this problem. We solve it by using a different kind of work. So we don't have mining, we don't have staking. We are the one blockchain that uses the collection of money as our form of work. Uh, and it's a, it's a really big deal. It's a big improvement. We can talk about why, but the result of this is that instead of paying for miners and stakers, the people that get the money are the people that run servers. So running a server is like mining and it's like staking. And if you're running a computer that connects to people and does stuff, you will make money. And the result of this is that the money that used to go into mining equipment and the money that used to just the stakers would collect and hold it, all of that money is now paying for the network. So Sado is a version of Bitcoin where we pay the people that run the network and the security and the economic properties are otherwise just like Bitcoin. Yeah. So that's the that's the economic answer. It's not why we care, but that's the really general. What's the biggest change? Make sense, Nicole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I saw the problem that Bitcoin has, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the normal users could benefit a lot from Sato uh, instead of mm -hmm. only the miners could benefit from that world, right? So well, yeah, right. Like Bitcoin's model. If we go right back to the beginning, go right back to the, the white paper, Bitcoin's idea is we'll pay the miners and the miners will pay for stuff, right? So the miners are supposed to pay for the network. And the idea is, well, of course, if you ask people, you know, well, of course, miners will pay. If miners don't pay, miners don't make any money. And it sounds like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like if, they, if the miners don't pay for it, who's going to pay for it? No one will pay for it. The problem is that this is not actually how free market economics work. Um, what people do in a free market is they do what makes them money. They don't do what benefits everyone. And as long as there's a difference, the activity that benefits everyone doesn't happen. Uh, so there's a lot of, in, in real economics, not, not like libertarian fantasy economics, if you want to see what a market's going to do, you look at what people themselves want to do to make money. And you see where that leads you and where that leads you with Bitcoin is it leads you into failure. Uh, but you know, with Bitcoin, this is probably about 10 years old. Um, we're, you know, with Sado, we're building a network that's very scalable and very big. So we have to deal with these problems right away. Mm -hmm. So we talk about talk a lot of about the economics of Seto. Then I would like to know that how the benefit, how the users can really benefit from Seto to earn some like uh, tokens or mm -hmm. uh, the the incentives they, they could have from Seto. Okay, so so Seto is like Bitcoin. There's tokens. When you make a transaction, you attach a tiny bit of the token and it pays, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the differences that Sato offers? One, on a security level, it's much better because there's no 51% attack. So there's nothing you can own half of to get all of the money. Uh, and the reason for that is if you, uh, it's related to fee collection, right? What we're really paying people to do is collect money from users and give it to other people. So if you're attacking the network, well, you don't have money from users, you have to spend your own money out of pocket. So attacking the network is always expensive. That's one benefit. Security wise, we fix a big, 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 big problem that other blockchains don't fix. Yeah. Here's another reason it matters though, right? Now, let's say we're Bitcoin or we're Ethereum and we're, we take your fee and we give it to the miners. You still need to pay for the network. Right? Mm -hmm. Like the network's not free. The miners aren't paying. So look at something like uh, Ethereum with Infura. All of the money is going to the miners. 
And Infura is going to need a way to make money. With Sado, that problem is solved because the fee that you pay goes directly to the people that are running the network. So right away, it's half as expensive because you don't need extra money to pay for these things, right? The money that would go to mining, well, this goes to the server, the network operators. So we save you half the money right then. But then go back and look at this 51% attack. What you're paying for, you get, you get twice as cheap. Because with Bitcoin, if you spend $100 in fees, it costs about 50 bucks to attack the network. With Sado, if you spend $100 in fees, it costs about $100 to attack the network. So what this means is that Sado is four times cheaper than proof of work and proof of stake. And we're four times cheaper, and we have a network where the money goes to the servers that are the ISPs. So the money is paying for really big servers, and users are paying a lot less. So the result is we have a network that can move a lot more data around. It's a lot more scalable, and it's a lot cheaper per byte. So Sado, it's like a blockchain. You know, it's got tokens like Bitcoin. But what it really is, is it's a big, 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 big data network. Does that answer the question? Yeah, like, yeah, why, yeah. Why do you want to use this? Well, we want a really big data network. It's like we want the internet. We don't want some tiny BBS from the 1980s that only has a little bit of bandwidth. Yeah, I see Slato is a good infrastructure for blockchain industry and also a long lasting yeah. one for the community, for the ecosystem, right? Yeah, one, one way to think of it is a lot of people think Bitcoin is, oh, it's tokens and it's money. <laughs> They're not wrong. But you can also think of it as a network that you can, you sign stuff and you broadcast it. It's a broadcast network. So I can publish information and anybody, anybody can listen. And the kind of applications you want to build on broadcast networks require scale they require massive scale and uh you can't do them on smaller networks like bitcoin so smaller network like bitcoin they can kind of just be money with sado because the network is so big and because the network solves the economic problems we can run data applications um, i got a story you want a story i can give you a story mm -hmm. you can play poker on sado the the guys that invented rsa they wrote an algorithm to, to shuffle the deck and play cards. And they said, no one will ever use this because you can't read out all the numbers on the phone. It's too much data. But with Sado, you can do it. You take the data, you put it in the transaction, and you send it. And it's, it's not a lot of data for the network. So you can do a lot of things you can't do, uh, you can't do in other ways with Sado. Mm -hmm. It's efficient in the economy, right? Cool. And secure. Like, mm. here's another example. Uh, you know how when you when you do online banking, mm -hmm. your browser connects to the bank and they do a little bit of data and then, okay, it's encrypted, right? Yeah. What they're doing is they're sending data back and forth uh, using a process called Diffie-Hellman. And they're creating a secret number. And the cryptography is wonderful. Uh, the idea is, even though the internet is public, the two of us end up with a secret that nobody knows. What happens when we do that on a blockchain? I can connect with anyone in the world because it's a broadcast network. Anyone can connect with me. No one can stop that. We can generate encryption keys that we can then use on the, on the regular old internet. So we can start doing things like distributed WeChat, where there's no Tencent. When I broadcast a message, I broadcast my IP address. So I can connect to you, you can connect to me. And all of my other, you know, my Ponyo Charter and all of my friends and, you know, everyone in my we WeChat group, there's no Tencent, there's no machine there. We've used the blockchain to eliminate Tencent to eliminate Facebook, to eliminate Twitter. And what are we using the blockchain for? We're using it to broadcast, this is who I am, this is my IP address. 
So the, the really basic things you can do are much more important than money and much more interesting. Um, I think we'll see them in the next five years. Yeah, sounds amazing. Yeah, let's move to another topic. Uh, we mm -hmm. know that CETA was listed on Gate.io in May. And what about the other big milestones and latest achievements mm -hmm. that CETA has made? Can you share with us? Sure. Um, I'd suggest people were, we're going to start dot .arcade reach out. Um, you know how I gave you the poker story? Mm -hmm. um, we've been awarded a grant by the Web3 Foundation for gaming. So uh, part of this is if you go to sado.io, uh, you can, we have a game arcade, oh. so you can play games for free on Sado and those games will very soon, you'll be able to play the games using dot tokens and other tokens. When we started, it was just Sado and all of these other tokens are coming in. Um, that's what we're working with the web three foundation on that stuff is going to be happening very soon. Um, so, you know, what is that? That's like Sado, it's the broadcast network. And if you want to use Sado with another cryptocurrency, that's fine. So you'll be able to use Sado with Bitcoin. You'll be able to use Sado with Ethereum with, with these other networks, perfectly fine. Um, so that stuff is coming soon. Uh, it's coming with DOT first uh, because that's where we've been building the infrastructure first. Okay, so that's quite interesting. I will try it later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poker if poker's great because there's no central server. It's just like if we play poker, it's like you and me. Oh. So uh like there's no there's no third party. Cool. The the guys at the Web3 Foundation, they were like, What? You can do that? No, 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 you need a server. We go, no, you don't. Look. And uh they're like, Yeah, oh, wow, we we didn't know this. It's magic. Um, it's math, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you can you can roll dice. You can shuffle cards, you can do random fair things. So, you know, like casinos, online gaming, like in 10 years, why would you use a casino? Mm. Well, just cheat you, you know? If you got two, three people in the game, the two, three people, you know, my computer, your computer, and, and John's computer. So that stuff is, that's happening. I'm, I, I do a lot of tech work daily. We've got a new Rust client coming out with some great numbers. Um, but yeah, people can come and see. There's a lot happening. Sure. Okay. And uh, in terms of our roadmap, what is our short-term plan and what set will do to achieve these targets? So any upcoming events yeah, or that partnerships? Is, <laughs> that so is the short-term, Nicole. Uh, I mean, long-term, we're aiming to be a major, major, major blockchain, top three crypto. Mm -hmm. um, the people that understand how SATO works, if, if you go to most people, they're like, top three, that's crazy. <laughs> and we go, no, 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 because everything else has this real problem. And so everything else, as it grows, you get Infura or you get Tau or you get this one company or maybe two companies. SATO is not like that. So as these networks get bigger, they kind of destroy themselves. And they turn into like a private coin. Sado does not have this problem. And people that understand Sado, the best thing someone can do, uh, honestly, right now, in terms of how do I really do well in blockchain is learn how Sado works. Um, because the people that really understand, they go, oh my God, like it's not over. There's Bitcoin, there's Ethereum, there's going to be Sado. Um, and, but we're at the stage right now where we've, just gone from developing to we're starting to talk to people and people in the general community are starting to learn so it's a really really special time uh, and it's not going to last that long we think the rust clients out in in four to six months and then the numbers come out on scale and the industry is going to change but yeah the long term is long term is probably five to ten years short term is four months Okay, so what about the next quarter, maybe? Hmm? The three, the third quarter oh, of yeah. this well, year. The, the .arcade stuff is happening. You know, uh, people can go to the website, they can see, it's like, do you want to play poker with polka dot coins? Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. So that's coming out. Uh, that's 
most of that stuff is done. The Web3 Foundation has already approved Milestone 1, so the code's ready. Um, for us, it's making sure we can talk to people about it. Um, okay, great. Okay, this should be some like basic information about Seto. So mm -hmm. maybe we can look at some questions from Twitter that we collected before mm -hmm. our event. Okay. Yeah, there are really a lot of great questions. And uh, the first one will be, uh, too many projects promise magic, but never mm -hmm. release any working product or prove any revenue within a short or long time of release. So if your project also like this, if not, can you tell us what makes your project different from the other projects? HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash S-A-I-T-O dot I-O. Go play games. <laughs> We're not paperware. We've got a ton of stuff. The cryptography we talked about, using the blockchain to make secret numbers, you can do that today. Hmm. Okay, great. And the next question is, currently DeFi project is on fire, but you know that contract security spec issue in DeFi, has your smart contract been audited? How do you guarantee the protection of users' funds? Yes. It's been audited. Uh, the blockchain is under development, um, but the ERC, the, the token that people can buy and sell is audited. There were no problems. There yeah, are no okay. problems. People, you know, people worry because they're like, oh, I haven't heard of SATA, you know? And it's like, look, guys, we've been around for, we've been developing for three years, uh, talking to people, you know, it, we're not a, we're not a fly by night, rug pull blockchain project, you know? Um, if people haven't heard of us now in six months, they will. So, uh, yeah, look into it. Okay. And the next question, how do you plan to promote the project in different countries? For example, in some countries, English is not spoken well, and mm -hmm. uh, do you have, um, local communities for them to better understand the project? Um, yes. Uh, I mean, we're, we're working on marketing right now. Our marketing team is in Beijing. Um, so the biggest community outside English is Spanish though. Um, I think it's, there's something really interesting with like Chinese crypto communities, Spanish crypto communities. They're very different. Um, like I think a lot of Chinese people, they, they, they're like, okay, how do I like Chao B and that sort of thing. Um, no, like it's not bad. It's like, yeah, go, good, good, good job. Go Chao B, go Zhuan Qian, you know? Um, they want to make profits yeah. anyway. Well, no, no, it, it's important. Like, why are people in crypto? People are in crypto for financial independence. And so, uh, like, governments and organizations cannot take advantage of them. Uh, so that's not criticism. Mm -hmm. um, it's saying that I think in different communities, People look for different things. Right now, the applications on Sado aren't financial applications. So things like the games, like you're playing a game to play the game. You're not playing the game to make money. So a lot of the things like if you oh blockchain gaming, they're looking to like yield farm. They're looking to do something, make tokens, sell tokens. That's not what you find on Sado. What you find on Sado is the future of every online casino, um, you know, but it's like, it's a different kind of, it's a different kind of engagement. So yeah, it's happening. And it's interesting because like English community and the Chinese community and Spanish community, people are very different. Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing it. We'll see. I think those are the big three for us. Um, other communities, We've got a small Arabic group, but uh, they're not as loud. Outside of, I think, Spanish, English, and Chinese, we don't really have really active communities. Mm -hmm. So I need to do more marketing, maybe, and to build the community, right? Well, we need to, yeah, of course. I mean, we, we've got a roadmap of what we're doing. It's building the network. Mm -hmm. Like, the current network is, is JavaScript. Now, that means the network can't really get bigger than 100 megabytes to 200 megabytes blocks. As soon as we hit 100 to 200 megabytes with JavaScript, 
we're dead. Uh, no, 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 no. We're, we're not. We're not like people lie. Two hundred megabytes. Oh, that's really big. It's like no, that's not big. Two hundred megabytes is really, really small. Um, you know what's really big is a gigabyte block. Uh, what's really, really big is I mean you can do the math like doing a terabyte a day, but you can do it with quality network. It's just uh, this is the sort of scale we're building for with the Rust client. Um, and the reason is that the JavaScript client, you get one CPU, and so you're really limited. Like that one CPU works really hard, and then you die. With Rust, we can have like 20 CPUs, and they can all help. So when you're analyzing a block, you can take this work and you can divide it up, and it goes really quickly. Um, to be a really big blockchain, to be a stable blockchain, and to solve some problems, we need to have the Rust client done. So um, you know, like there's the marketing side, there's also the tech side and both of them need to be moving together. Uh, we're working on both. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd say it's, we're about six months away from, uh, we're about four months away from having the rest client done. And what needs to happen after that is the ability for people to move their tokens onto Sado if they want, uh, where there are some things like staking. So you can actually make a, a little bit of money by staking your Sado if you want, but but that's you know that's four to six months out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also, people ask how can they get information about the team, and do you have a plan to recognize your team later? HTTPS. <laughs> colon forward slash s a i t o dot i o everything's there we're public so uh, important on things. <laughs> we're on we're on we're on ways in as well so yeah chat with us anytime okay let's see one more question from twitter and um, the nft is a very hot trend now so do you prefer to catch up with this trend or still follow and focus on original re re uh, roadmap Create values, well, not create trend. Sorry, could you repeat that? Which trend? NFT. NFT. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are NFT, but it's not a trend. It's like if you play games, uh, let's say you're playing a game on the Sado Arcade. Maybe you want to use Ethereum, mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Maybe you want to use something else, some other beat, some other token. That's an NFT. Uh, so we're doing that. We're not, um, it's not a, it's not a trend though. It's like, uh, it's just a, it's something that you might use in the game. Um, so yeah, it's of course, but we're not like, we're not selling crypto punks. Like who cares about that? That's garbage. Um, if someone wants to build a game that has crypto punks, that's why you'd use Sato. Mm -hmm, got you. Okay. I think that's all all the questions we want mm -hmm. to answer from Twitter. And before we open our floor to the community members, maybe we can just uh, have a short break. And uh, okay. Kelly, could you help us to send more Sato uh, right packets to the community? I'll, I'll give you guys a treat to break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, drink some water. Oh, oh, oh my God, we got a cat. <laughs> this is the internet, so internet and cats, huh? <laughs> is, uh, she's a Thai cat, but her name is Xiao <laughs> Pixi. Oh, yeah, we all are. Okay, okay, she can go. Uh, yeah, she's she's really a Ying Xiong. She's a hero cat too. She uh, hero if cat. You, if, <laughs> yes, uh, if you tifu, if you beat up or if you bully one of the other cats, mm -hmm. like not bullying, but like you don't let them go, you're hugging them and they're like, oh, I don't like this. She'll come in and she'll come and she'll like bite you and try to defend them. And it's so sweet, yeah. you know? It's so very nice. It's a hard story to tell because it makes it sound like we're beating up cats. And it's like, no, we're not beating up cats. We're being very nice to them. But like, <laughs> the, we, there are a lot of feral cats here, wild cats. And you know, you hold them and you pet them. Some don't like, don't like it. And you know, she'll come and rescue them. It's really sweet. <laughs> we can chat about cats if people don't want to chat about Sado. But Sado's great. Really, guys, you should. Uh, 
uh, visit the site and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, Learn more from the website, right? <laughs> a lot of information hands there. Down. Hands down. People that get it, they go, oh my God. Because they realize that like, they realize that this is how you do it. Um, but it, it takes people time because it's really different. It's really different, right? Mm. Um, anyway, yeah, if people have questions, hopefully we can talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Now let's, we can see more questions the community members have and uh, pick some questions to answer. Mm -hmm. Pick the hard ones. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> anyway, thank you, David, for the time and information mm -hmm. shared with us about Seto. Mm -hmm. Really learned a lot. <laughs> when Seto mainnet, you can put applications up now. People say mainnet, mainnet. It's like, what's mainnet? Um, what you can't do, what we don't promise, is that we're not going to reset the network. Um, so when people say, when's mainnet, that what they're really asking is when do we stop resetting the network? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, look, we're going to reset the network as long as we need to, but there's going to be a point in about six months or so, give or take, where we will promise people that if you have tokens on the Sado network, they're not going away. Um, and so the timeline for that is about half a year. We need to get the Rust client done first because um, the Rust client affects some things that we need to, what, what exactly is this number? That mm -hmm. sort of thing. A lot of work. Mm. Uh, hey, David, do you have plan to list set up to big exchanges? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can't really comment on that because I've been told I can't comment on it. Um, I'd suggest people look at our list of backers. Like, uh, I can say that, yeah, we're in talks with exchanges. Um, you know, maybe I'll put it this way too. It's reasonably easy to do some things if you want to. Um, one of the things you've got to consider is whether you want to do that though. Um, with a lot of the big exchanges, uh, I'll say with at least one, we've been like, well, you know, we're not really sure we see the value of that. And it's not because of uh, the tradability and convertibility, uh, because we're listed on big one, we're listed on gate, uh, we are in talks with some others. It's like, it depends on how much money they want and how much control of the network they want. And that's not always something that benefits users. It usually helps create a pump and dump, but it doesn't benefit the people that have the tokens. Um, I think if anyone's, uh, you know, if you take a look at like our chart performance on token price, we're a really, really weird coin because most of them go up and then they go right back down. Mm -hmm. And when the bear market hit, they just got bottomed out with Sato at the very beginning, we didn't really go up very high. And then with the bear market, we've fallen with some of the market, but compared to the other coins, we're actually doing reasonably well. And I think the reason for that is. At the very beginning, no one had no one understands Sado at the start. Um, and then as people understand Sado, they go, oh, my God, I want to get involved in this. And so we've got a weird situation where it takes people time to learn about Sado. Um, and then that's reflected in this. And so we even look at things and we say, well, we're listing on this exchange like, OK, well, we'll get a pump and we'll get another dump because what you're going to get, you're going to get the people that are short term speculators. Uh, and, you know, there's a certain value in that for getting people to learn. And so we also look at the exchanges as marketing activities. Um, but the exchanges also will list you when you get a certain amount of trading volume and a certain amount of value. And so you have to evaluate what are they asking for? Because a lot of them, they say, okay, well, we'll do it, but you have to give us like 2% of the network. And if someone says 2% of the network, it's like, yeah, no, go away. Like, you, you know, there's absolutely no way also because when you list, you will need to buy your reserves and you'll be buying them from everyone that has this. So, you know, maybe the short answer is we can do it. Um, we are in talks with people, stuff is happening, um, but we don't, that's not necessarily, we think the most important thing. So we're not like in a mad dash to be like the best thing we need to do tomorrow is find more exchanges. Um, our priorities are 
the dot arcade reach out so people more people can understand what sato is getting the sato rust client done so that we can show people the numbers in the code and they can see oh my god yes you know a hundred thousand transactions a block is no problem on the software how much data can we add and start really thinking about what sato will do but yeah i mean the exchange stuff is happening it's just we're not like we're not like a meme coin where that's the only reason the coin exists. Um, so, so it yeah. just happened naturally, right? <laughs> One well, it is, it is happening naturally. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a trade off there too, because what you get is you get, um, exchanges add you as people learn about you and you kind of get the smaller ones that add you first and you get like, you want a couple of the big ones because you want people to be able to trade for cash. Right, like you want a way for someone to sell RMB and buy Sato or sell USD and buy Sato, because for some people, like that's all they can do, um, and you want the bigger exchanges too, because usually there's more liquidity. Um, because if there's more liquidity, the trading can happen there. If it goes on Uniswap, like the price goes way up and the price goes way down, and some people go, "Why, well, you know, whatever." Um, so, like, you've got that reason for the exchange. Um, like for us, this stuff is happening and it is coming. It actually, Richard deals with it. So it, it isn't even on my desk. Uh, I, I do know that we are talking to people um, and I know that stuff is in the works, but I also know I've been told we can't talk specifically. Um, but I think we can also confirm, like give people a sense, you know, that like if, if you've got a project that is chasing exchanges, that project is creating whales that will dump on you and you should be very, very careful. Yeah, we are not we are very focused on not creating whales because our entire goal is in not creating whales. Uh, if that makes sense, because the security of the network, the way Sato works, like, we don't want someone who has 3% of the network. Like, that's just it's a problem for network security. It's like someone who starts with all of the miners. Um, hopefully that answers the question. It's happening, but it's not necessarily it's not our top priority no, and, okay, you know sense. yeah 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 the, the numbers of also like the number of holders are growing the token about like the token price is kind of going up over time we've had better returns than bitcoin since 2017 so and that doesn't look like it's stopping so you know as long as people are happy with price performance there's also we're content to watch what happens and let people benefit over time. Okay. And uh, I need incoming a once for the community in China. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? I need incoming a once for the community in China. Mm -hmm. so, uh, some more activities they can take part in. Uh, yeah, come to the WeChat group. Um, I'm not I'm, I'm most of my time is on coding. So, uh, I, and I answer questions and I can answer questions in Chinese. So, wow. you know, I know this is me in English, uh, but, uh, yeah, the community activities, I, I think our WeChat group is best, mm -hmm. but for ideas, I think the English channel is, is better because it's weird. Like a lot of the Chinese crypto stuff is. Like it's like Duan Qi Chao Bi, you know? So, but Sato, we're really like, we're a project like Bitcoin. So it's an interesting difference. Um, you know, you can come Chao Bi and you can learn about how Sato works too. And then you'll realize, oh my God, why am I Chao being? You know, Sato is the next Ethereum. So, Maybe different people have different ideas about how they evolve mm -hmm. with these tokens and uh, some will do like true uh, but... I, I mean per personally like I, I gotta say as an old timer I think people should be really careful child B because you usually lose money child B unless it's a bull market right like it's really really hard especially if you don't have a lot of money because when the market starts going down you worry and the lower it goes the more you want to pull your cash out right and it's like that's how you lose crypto um you know the really the solid way to make money in crypto is to find the stuff that will go up and understand it so that you get involved when it's really cheap. 
right? Like the people I know who did really well with Ethereum is like you buy it eight bucks. They didn't buy it like 25 cents because at 25 cents, Ethereum's like name coin, you know, like, is it going to work? But by the time it hit eight bucks, you go, well, Bitcoin has a scaling problem and Ethereum will be number two. So people could make that financial decision. Is that child B? I mean, I think it's, I think it's like leads yet B, you know, and then you know, which coins to hold for a year, you know, which coins mm. to hold for two years. Um, and I think that's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite agree more. And in mixing community, I think maybe uh, different from the guys in WeChat because we encourage mm -hmm. people to do regular uh, investment for tokens. Of course. Mm -hmm. We're going to replace WeChat. We're not going to replace WeChat. <laughs> I love you guys. I should actually, I, I actually, we, you're right. And I was talking with Richard and we're like, you know, what we should really do is we should be promoting we we waste in internationally um, and we should be getting our English and Spanish users onto we sin as well so, uh, onto onto me yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah Nicole I feel bad now you're totally right <laughs> you, you know, we have, diff we have different kind of kinds of China. users it's our users is China, more like a crypto words <laughs> and it's like you're right and it's also that WeChat kind of sucks but anyway yeah I know a lot of regulations from China China government you, mm -hmm. you know yeah but we are different yeah. here is i love you i love you guys already uh, but yeah no we were talking we're like we should promote we should promote mission internationally we should get our spanish guys we are open know. and free <laughs> yeah at least and, free <laughs> well and i gotta say like i have an incredible amount of respect for lisa Lai. you know um mm -hmm. i i love the guy in part because i think he really you know people like oh investment chow whatever you know some people love him some people he's like a figure that's polarizing i think he really cares and i think he really thinks about the fundamental ideas yeah and he has his own makes, theory about how to invest yeah and i mean that is so different from so many people um and you know coming to crypto you know being able to talk to someone who actually cares about the fundamentals is so hard mm -hmm. uh, and it's so rare in the space so yeah um anyway we love we love me soon so we should do more promotion of it yeah 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 of course and you are always welcome to come here and i'll i'll say to to have your own community here <laughs> we, we, we can create me in spanish and we'll bring our spanish community on of course and you guys will have everyone complaining can. about south america <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 let's do another question there yeah. and how is it applying to attract developers to start apps on Zeta? Um, I see well, you are we, doing we, a lot we, of work currently. Yeah, we're, we're doing a lot of work and we're a small team. But this is what I think. One, we're making it easy. Uh, the apps that you see on Sato, anyone can build. The problem is it's a different kind of development. Because uh, like there's no smart contracts. So it's not what people think of because Sato is different than what's there. What I think we, well, what we're doing is building games, building stuff to see if we can get users and we can grow the community that way. So if we got a network with more and more applications and more and more users that has a token. That token needs to have a price. That's why we did the IDO. That's why we've got exchange listing stuff happening because it's allowing people to own the token, gives it a price. And when we've got a community with a lot of users and there's a token that's worth money, we think that's what's going to bring the developers to start. Um, so it's a different approach than like putting up a smart contract. It's building, like, I think the community needs to be there for the devs to come. This might be wrong. Another approach is we go and we find companies and we get companies to build apps and then the users come later. Uh, that could happen because we are doing some kinds of partnerships, but I think the most likely thing is we get people playing games, we get people playing poker, we have advertisements, people are now earning a little bit of Sado and the developers now, they can build things on Sado and they want to build things on Sado. Um, so it's a chicken and egg problem. And I think we, we, we do it this way. Mm -hmm. Sounds reasonable. 
and uh, let me see if there are any more questions there. Okay. No one ever asks how Seda works. It's crazy. <laughs> you guys you want to do really, really, really well. Learn how Seda works. That's my advice. It's fine. It is actually even financial advice because Seda fixes such a big problem that when people understand, it can change the way you think about blockchain. Uh, and you know, the AMA is not technical. People can bring us questions anytime yeah 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 sure should but, we should we wrap up here then nicole yeah we can okay i think that's all and uh thank you david for the time to join us and give us a lot of information about uh, seto mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the white paper is hard english someone wants more english okay the white paper is difficult english but it's, it's so technical totally sometimes easy. Hard it's to... academic it's academic um because you know crypto it's like blah 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 decentralization blah <laughs> blah 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 smart contract it's mm. like no 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 that's not the problem um you got to understand the actual problem and the white paper talks about the it talks about economics it says these are the failures in the free market and this is what we need to fix and it says this is how we do it because you got to understand the problem to know how to fix it. Yeah. Anyway, Nicole, thank you for your time. And thank you. Uh, everybody, thank you for your time too. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And this AMA ends now. And Kelly will send another set to write packets in the community group. Thank you guys yep. for joining us and uh, hope great. to see you all next time. So have much. a great weekend. Great. Bye-bye guys. <laughs> Goodbye. Take care. Bye, guys.